to know from this crowd how many people love to eat fish than any other animal protein. That's very good for your health because as far as science is concerned, fish is the best animal protein that you can eat. Wow. Um, first of all, my name is Amna Saif Kande. I'm coming from Sierra Leone. I'm the CEO of one of Agro Fish Farm. To start with, the problem we are solving in Sierra Leone, food insecurity and malnutrition is a big problem in Sierra Leone. I'm very sure it's not only in Sierra Leone, it's cut across the continent. And it will shock you like a small population in Sierra Leone, according to statistics, we are 7 million people. And 59% of these people live in rural community. And it's very difficult for them to access fresh fish for meet their protein requirements. And within this population, we have 40.9, which are children. It's very, very disheartening to know that out of this number, we have 33% of the children are malnourished, according to WHO. Also, fish farming is a baby stage in Sierra Leone. But according to, the, to FAO and Ministry of Fisheries and Aquaculture, we have 425 active fish farmers, but there is nobody producing fish feed in Sierra Leone. So that's a big problem we are facing. So all what we use is local ingredients, rice bran fish meal. What is currently happening? In the fish farming sector in Sierra Leone, some people just decide, leave the pond for the fish to survive on their own. Some will throw in the pond what they have, at least the fish will survive. So what are we bringing on board from Agro Fish Farm? In Agro Fish Farm, we are doing semi-intensive fish farming, back up with e feeding machine, because since feed is a big problem, we are trying to at least reduce the amount of feed that we are using to reduce the cost on us as a company. So this is the machine we are using, very simple. That's the drum. It's where you pour the pellet or powder feed. That's the funnel that is going into the pond. And that white side is where you regulate the, the amount or the time you want the feed to be distributed in the pond. If you want the machine to feed the fish at every four hours, it's very okay. But what is very interesting about this, about this efficient machine we are using, there is a metal down in the pond that will tell you the appetite of the fish by the time, by the amount of time they touch that metal. So this machine does not only feed the fish, but it gives them the required amount of fish they need. So by so doing, we're able to increase our growth rate and reduce reduce the amount of cost we spend on feed. Our customers, these are our customers, fish sellers, hotels, guest house, and households that use fish. In Sierra Leone, we eat fish. 90% of the population eats fish to meet their protein requirements. So these are the customers that we are having in this sector. So these are our competitors. We have two key competitors because fish is fish. We have the cold fish farmers and the frozen fish plants. Because in Sierra Leone, we have big, big trailers that go out in the sea and fishing and store their fish. So these are one of the competitors. We have cold fish farmers. But what's the edge over then? One, my availability is guaranteed. I have access over my products. Then also, accessibility. For me, I don't sell only wholesale, but these frozen people only sell wholesale. I sell retail, I sell wholesale. And lastly, technical know-how. We have little... Our competitors have little or no idea. As for me, I have BS in aquaculture and fisheries management, so I know both the practical and the theoretical part in fish farming. So what's our market channel? It's very simple. You can visit us at our fish farm. You can place order through social media. We can do delivery depending on the quantity of fish you buy from us. And also, you can do normal call that, okay, we want this amount of fish and we can deliver. So our business model is very simple. We do business to business, like we said, to a big hotel. I have a hotel by the name of Duas that we do supply. And we also have those fisher women that do sell in the market. We do supply there as wholesale. Then we do B to C, which has normal customers that just want to buy for their daily consumption. Our revenue model, this, is, this revenue is doing our pilot phase that we did last year because we're only operating on one pond. So if we sell 1,000 fish at the rate of dollar, we make 1,000 every six months. So in a thousand dollar plus the number of fingerly to be able to sell to other fish farmers across the region will be able to make like two thousand two hundred dollars in a year because we are just operating in one pond at the moment. Why do we want at Agro Fish Farm, this money will really help us to go a long way. We'll use it, one, for infrastructure, because we are going to increase the number of funds that we are having from one to three. This will be able to increase on, on our revenue base. And secondly, we'll buy machines to produce fish feed, because this is a big problem we are facing in that sector. We will buy this machine and process 
This also is another stream to create revenue for us because we'll sell feed to other fish farmers in the community as well. This is my team. My name is Amna Tayyip Kanata Ali Asset. I'm an Obama Fellow 2018. I study aquaculture in school university. And this is my co-founder. He too studied aquaculture from Jala University. If you believe that the children are the leaders in the nearest future, then help me join this fight. Because for them to take up that mantle of leadership, they need to be physically, mentally oriented. Because malnutrition does not only affect the physical being, it affects the cognitive function of the brain at that very early stage. Thank you. That was fantastic, thank you. Ooh. Um, two very quick questions. So one, is any part of this technology proprietary? As in, did you invent or do you own any, do you have intellectual property ownership of any part of this? Are the machines yours that you created? Are the pawns yours created? Is there something that's unique about this that only you have? Uh, come again, please, I don't get you clear. So, do you own any part of this technology? Did you make the machines? Oh, not like I really make the machine fully. I was helped by some uh, tech people back home that helped me to fix this, like especially when it comes to the automated side of it because I'm not in tech. They helped me fix so I'll be able to like to regulate the time that the, that the machine would just spray the fish in the pond. And all the other sector, like the drum, is not that difficult to do, but they helped me that part of it because I'm not tech-based, but I was part of it to see how they do it. Okay. Um, and the other question is, so, so to understand that you bought the machine, right? And then put it in the pond. Yeah, they connected it. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, the other question is logistics. So when the fish come out of the pond, how do they get to market? How do they get to market? Well, I earlier said, okay, let me just go. Okay, fine. My market channel, like I earlier said, like you can visit us at, at our farm gates. That is the one. Secondly, you can place order because like for big hotels and restaurants, like they will tell you, okay, for example, because since it's, it's an agricultural base, you cannot produce every day. It's a doing of, okay, they will say, for example, at this time, we need like this amount of quantity. So they will place order like maybe two or three months higher, like you'll be producing for, the, okay, this one will need like 500 fish at this time. So by placing order, we can give them. And also through phone call. You can call like any customer, okay, do you have fish? I want like maybe a dozen of fish, then we'll sell to them. That's the, way, that's the way the fish gets to the market. Do you have people that work in your team that take the fish to those people? Or is there a company you work with? No, okay, I, I, I work with some, like some, in the community, I have some people that do some logistics. So I, I partner with them when it, the need arises. Like if I want to import, I'll call them, okay, you need to make this delivery to me at this also point, but there will be an increase on the cost because I have to cover that cost for the, for the fish to be taken to that particular person. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello. Hi. So well done. Uh, just a simple question. What would you say are the three major key challenges you are facing as a startup and specifically in this sector? In that sector, yeah. One is the knowledge because in back home, fish farming is a baby stage, so that's why most people back off. The skill base to presently, like I'm just calling people that have the passion because we don't have people that are well skilled in this sector back home because the school is barely five years old to six years old that I study from. So skill is one. The second feed is the biggest problem, fish feed, like I mentioned earlier. Feed is the biggest problem and it's also, it almost consumes like 70% of your expenditure because the pond and the other thing is a one go. After you construct the pond, you have no problem with that, but the fish have to eat every day until you harvest them. So feed is one. And second, the last one is, uh, I think these are the two. The last one is uh, around like the technology. For example, to do a test of the water, doing the pilot phase, I have some mortality because to get somebody like to test the area for you, to test the quality of the water, these are two key, ch three key challenges that I'm facing in the sector back home. Hi, thank you. Um, so what is the cost to you to set up a pond? 
the cost I used to set up a pond. A, a, a $1,000, 500 can set up a pond, taking it like from the t construction, buying the, buy the buy, because for now I don't buy fish because I got the first stock from an NGO. So this fish produce for themselves. So all what you need to do is to do sorting. To do sorting. But if you are starting from scratch, you have to buy the baby fish as well. Then you have to buy equipment to do the construction. You have to buy feed. And you have to set an office space if you are starting from scratch. But if you have all this, it can take you $1,000 to set up your one pond. But how about the pond itself? Don't you need land for it? That's why I say if you are starting from scratch. Okay, for the land, that's why I said $1,500 to start from scratch, including the land. Including the land. Yes. Yeah, so if but you have land, $1,000 can do that for you. Thank you. How are you fighting against the competition? Uh, well, fighting against the competition, one, the area I operate, like I mentioned, uh, the Bad Word Network and all stuff like that. Why I fight against the, the, the competition? Like, one, I'm accessible. What I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not limited to the amount of fish I sell. Those from the freezing fish sellers only sell wholesale. So my own is available as wholesale and retail. Then the co-fish farmers, like, they have little or no technical know-how. For me, I studied in school, I did both the practical, and I worked with an NGO, I, I, uh, an INGO called World Fish Center for two years before going into my own business. So I have both the theory and the practical knowledge. So that's the way I'm able to like, go against my competitors. Thank you. <laughs>